Crocheting 101, a complete beginner's course for absolute beginner crocheters, created by Aaron from ABR Creations. Chapter 6, The Decrease. So now that you have learned how to increase, let's learn how to decrease. Decreasing is a bit complex compared to increasing. The main purpose of decreasing is to make the end stitches of the row less than the previous row. For instance, if you want to have 10 stitches instead of 15 stitches, you decrease 5 times. There are 3 different types of decreases. Let's go over them one at a time. Most of these decreases are mainly used for single crochets, but some of them are used for different stitches. The invisible decrease, marked with the abbreviation INVDEC, is mainly a decrease that is not at all noticed. The advantage of doing an invisible decrease is that not all the stitches are noticeable, so that is a useful way to keep your work neat. It also reduces the gaps between the stitches. When you use traditional decreased stitches, it can sometimes create gaps or holes in the crochet piece. With the invisible decrease, these gaps are significantly reduced. It also maintains the stitch count. Because the invisible decrease does not reduce the number of stitches in the row, it allows you to maintain an accurate stitch count for the pattern you are following. The disadvantage is that it is a bit tricky to do, as you have to work in the front loops of two stitches at once, which requires a slightly different technique compared to other decreases. Because the invisible decrease has many steps, it may take a lot of time for some crocheters. Now that you have learned the pros and cons of the invisible decrease, let's learn how to do it. Step 1. Insert your crochet hook in the front loops of the next two stitches. Step 2. Yarn over and pull the yarn through those two loops, just as if you are doing a single crochet. Step 3. Finally, yarn over and pull it through the remaining two loops. And there you go, we have made the invisible decrease. A quick note, the invisible decrease is mainly used when working in the round and is rarely used when working in the row. The single crochet two together, marked with the abbreviation SC2TOG, might be the easiest decrease compared to the invisible decrease. The advantage of doing the single crochet two together is that it is very simple to do. The downside is that the decrease can be noticeable in some crochet pieces, which may not be suitable for most crocheters who don't want to show the decrease. Now that you have had some tips on the single crochet two together, let's learn how to do it. Step 1. Insert your crochet hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Step 2. Insert your crochet hook again, but this time into the next next stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Step 3. Making sure that you have three loops on your crochet hook, yarn over and pull it through all three loops. And there you go, we have made the single crochet two together. The single crochet two together can not only involve two stitches being decreased, but also three or four stitches being decreased, meaning that you should insert your crochet hook three or four times. This type of decrease is commonly used in both working in the round and working in the row. The sharp decrease, marked with the abbreviation SDEC, is a technique used in crochet to create a more pronounced decrease in the number of stitches in a row or a round. The advantage is that it creates a more flat end to your piece and can be used at the end of your project. The drawback is that it is confusing for beginners and can be visible in the project. Now that you have had some tips on the sharp decrease, let's see how you can do it. Step 1. Insert your crochet hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Step 2. Insert your crochet hook again, but this time into the next next stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Step 3. 
Just like the single crochet two together, you should have three loops on your hook. But instead of yarning over and pulling it through all three loops, finish the decrease by pulling this last loop, that is the one you just pulled through in step two, through two loops. And there you go, we have made the sharp decrease. The sharp decrease is pretty useful for amigurumi projects as it creates a flat end at the end of your piece, which is pretty common when you're making amigurumi projects. This decrease is commonly used when working in the round, but is rarely used when working in the row. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this lesson, please consider subscribing to my channel and please like this video at the end of this tutorial. If you are ready for chapter 7, click here now or the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and get creative.